Memories are what make us who we are. They shape everything about us, but we know so little of what they actually are and how we make and lose them. We are closer now than ever before to learning the true nature of memories, and this video aims to explain a lot of what we know about this field of science. The four main areas of memory that we will go over in this video are how they are formed and stored, how and why we forget things, problems with recalling memories, and lastly how to improve memory. This video has been made in collaboration with thingswedontknow.com, a science education company that aims to explain the questions that we don't know the answers to yet, encouraging an awareness of current scientific research and helping to identify what areas new discoveries could be made in. With their help, this video will be looking at the mysteries of memories. The current very basic understanding of what memories are is that they are simply electrical signals sent between neurons in our brain that let us recall different things. The hippocampus is vital to changing short-term memories to long-term memories, and from there they are stored in the cortex, but where they are stored depends on the type of memory. Episodic memories, which are events through your life, are heavily dependent on many different sensations, so they are stored in networks all over the cortex as they have to use emotional memories which are stored in the amygdala, spatial memory from the hippocampus, and others. How a memory is actually formed isn't fully known, but scientists have been doing what scientists usually do and theorising. Currently it is thought that once you learn something new, the hippocampus slowly activates areas of the cortex to make pathways strong so you can access the memory, but a study done on mice seems to suggest that the cortex memory is made at the same time as the short-term memory in the hippocampus, and then the pathways are later made between them. This means that if done quick enough, you could block a memory from ever forming properly and completely forget it. Many people may think that forgetting things is bad, and in a lot of cases it may be, but forgetting is vital to being able to remember things. If we didn't forget things, it would be incredibly hard to recall the information that we need. Imagine being able to recall every detail of your life, you'd be overwhelmed with information and most of it will be worthless to the current thing you're trying to remember. We aren't entirely sure how we forget things, but one way information may be lost to us is if we lose a stimulus that will activate that memory. The memories will be there but we can't reach them. Another way memories can be lost is to fade away when we don't recall them enough, and this is something we need to learn more about. The circumstances during which a memory is laid down or last recalled will also affect how easily you can remember it and how correct it is. If you're paying more attention and focusing on a task, you're more likely to remember it and remember it accurately. Memories can be deliberately forgotten if you try hard enough. Brain scans have shown it to be possible. There are many ways of doing this, such as changing certain details of a memory, the colours or smells for instance. This can cause the memory to become distorted. In a study done recently, scientists showed people a list of words while also showing them pictures relating to the words, and then asked them to try to forget the words. They found that to forget the words, the test subject tried to forget the image relating to the word as well. This is like trying to forget falling off a bike by deliberately forgetting what the bike looked like, and apparently this is a good way of deliberately forgetting memories, as it's clear that they are more than simple pictures in our mind, they are networks of intertwining cues and stimulants, so it's easier to forget one thing by also forgetting the things that connect to it. Memory problems are perhaps one of the scariest things that can happen to a human, as memories are what makes us us, and so having problems recalling those memories is very scary. Alzheimer's, transient global amnesia, and PTSD are all very serious memory problems, but there are some less serious glitches, such as tip of tongue syndrome, where you can't remember a certain word. Scientists aren't entirely sure what causes this, but the leading idea is that it occurs when cues get mixed up, so the thing that makes you remember the word is also linked with a different but similar word. Another way in which you can forget words is if you have not used them in a long time, so the memory has degraded, as all memories seem to do over time. Again, we can only guess why this happens. Deja vu is another memory glitch that occurs often in people. It is incredibly hard to study, as it isn't known what causes it, so it's very difficult to replicate it in a lab, but there are still many looking into it. There are three leading explanations that scientists have come up with. The first idea is linked to the two aspects of a memory people have, recognising the object 
and remembering where they know it from. This is known as source monitoring. The idea is that when deja vu occurs, you have indeed seen that place before, but you're unable to remember where from. Colorado State University researchers supported this hypothesis when they put people in VR simulations of places with similar layouts but different details, so people felt the place was familiar but they weren't sure where from due to the differences. The second idea of what causes deja vu is that it is a direct and momentary physical flaw in the brain, such as a seizure. A seizure can cause a delay in information being transmitted, causing the feeling that completely new information is old. However, this idea is less likely than the first one, as new information in the brain is usually processed more slowly than old information, so processing pace would suggest that this is a new memory and it would probably not cause the feeling of an old memory. The last view into the cause of the strange sensation of deja vu is that you see an object unconsciously for a split second and don't fully acknowledge it, but then when you look again and register it, it feels familiar as you have indeed seen it before. This viewpoint has one large downfall, however, and that is the fact that we are constantly looking around our surroundings without properly taking it in, so deja vu should be more common if this idea is correct. Transient global amnesia is a little more serious than deja vu, but still isn't that bad as it only usually lasts at most a day. The causes are unknown, but of course there are theories into why sudden loss of recent memories occurs. Ideas are that it's some sort of migraine, as it is more common in older people with a history of migraines. It could also be a lack of blood to the brain causing neurons to work improperly, or some sort of epilepsy. Really we don't know what causes it, and so we can't treat it, but it only lasts a day at most, so there isn't much need to treat it. PTSD is perhaps one of the most serious and scary memory complications. Stressful situations are relived and cause anxiety and panic, but not everyone who goes through similar situations develop PTSD. It is now thought there is a genetic element that causes some people to have PTSD and others not to. People with smaller hippocampuses tend to be more likely to develop PTSD in response to a stressful situation. The hippocampus is important to storing the context of a memory, so if it is not working well it could mean that the context of the situation is lost, and so when the memory is recalled it's unclear to the person where is it from, and that it is just a memory. The last memory problem is maybe the worst and scariest of them all, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia more commonly found in elderly people. It is hard to know what kind of dementia a patient has, as they all have similar symptoms in the earlier stages, so you can only diagnose with a 90% accuracy. Again, scientists aren't 100% sure what causes it, but there is a clear correlation between developing Alzheimer's and possessing plaques and tangles in the brain. Plaques and tangles are buildups of certain proteins in the brain that should be helping microtubules to stick together, but for some reason clump together by themselves, causing the microtubules to degrade and damage the neurons. Microtubules are vital to your cells. They give them structure and transport things between cells like material and organelles, but more importantly to this topic, they transport information with them, so it is clear how important it is for them to be properly intact. However, though there is a link between getting plaques and having Alzheimer's, some of the time getting rid of them doesn't help, so it's unclear what causes it. Alzheimer's can also be linked genetically. Early onset Alzheimer's is caused by a specific genetic mutation, but other forms of dementia are down to lifestyle, such as what you eat, how much exercise you get, and so on. There are many different methods of improving memory, but the best way by far to improve memory is sleep. Sleep helps to form memories and helps your brain rest and recharge. Getting good sleep will help massively when trying to recall memories. Recalling memories regularly will also help you to remember them, but make sure you only recall the worthwhile stuff. Probably the most well-known way to improve your memory is exercise. It is still up for debate if exercise has a direct impact on the brain, or if it just helps in other areas of your mental and physical health that just happen to help with memory. Exercise can help you sleep better and feel better about yourself, which will improve memory, but some suggest that exercise actually increases brain volume. No studies have yet shown that mental exercise such as playing chess can help with memory retention. Your emotional state and overall happiness can also affect memory, but again this may be only because happier people are generally overall healthier and sleep better. 
This area of science is perhaps one of the most important and yet one of the least understood. Memories are very important to everyone and an extremely complex subject, but more and more research is being done into them to discover more. As we mentioned at the beginning, this video has been made with help from Things We Don't Know, a science education company based here in the UK. It is the goal of this organisation to create a place where all the questions that science is still finding answers to can be collected, in order to help increase public awareness of them, and to aid researchers in finding topics that are currently being investigated. This place is the website thingswedontknow.com. Here you can find an easily accessible and extensive list of all the scientific mysteries and currently unanswered questions that are being worked on, with links to places that are studying them and references to relevant sites and publications. Things We Don't Know really says it best themselves. There are two distinct aspects of science, learning about what science has discovered and discovering new things. We feel that scientists tend to concentrate on explaining things we already know and rarely explains the things we don't. We are dedicated to explaining the questions to which science still seeks answers. I highly recommend that you go have a look at their website if you haven't already. I'm sure you'll find something there that will interest you, since learning about the things we don't know and the research being done to discover the answers to them is one of the most exciting parts of science. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.